Hey guys, what's up? It's Etek here. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the Samsung Galaxy Gear and Sony Smartwatch 2 and Qualcomm Talk. And now I will start from the displays. So both the Samsung Galaxy Gear and the Sony Smartwatch 2 have 1.6 inch screen and Qualcomm hasn't released the specs on its display. And I do know that the Qualcomm Talk uses a mirror sole transflective display similar to the Sony Smartwatch 2 which also uses a transflective display but it isn't a mirror sole. The transflective display are the most powerful, efficient, full color displays on the market because they are nifty competition combination of the e-link and the LCD using both ambient light and the backlight and which gives great battery life with full color and far better performance than you would expect from an ink. So the Samsung Galaxy Gear uses a Super AMOLED display which is more light, power, efficient than a regular LCD especially if the UI is heavy on dark colors because it also uh, lights up the pixel and that are in use and full black means the pixel isn't used at all. The Galaxy Gear also potentially has the highest resolution of the bunch. We don't know the resolution about the Qualcomm Talk but the Gear is the at 320 by 320 and at Samsung uh, uh, Sony Smartwatch 2 has a resolution of 220 by 176. Now looking at the design, the Smartwatch 2 and the Talk are basic black squares but Sony uh, th suppresses the things up by offering multiple interchangeable wrist straps as well as a stainless steel option as far as the look of the watch face itself and it's kind of like the Galaxy Gear is the best out of the bunch but the size of the bezel seem unnecessary and adds too much bulk to what uh, should be a small device. Additionally while it's, it is nice that the Galaxy Gear has speakers, a microphone and a camera 1.9 megapixel all of which are features that are not present in either of the smartwatch 2 or the talk there are drawbacks of the gear to have those features. First of all though all of those features are built into a watch strap meaning you cannot change the watch strap and you are struck with the Samsung which, which the Samsung gives you and the second it's unclear as yet just how useful those features will be if you have a smartphone is this uh, is the speed a difference worth the far lower quality of taking a photo or video with your smartphone compared to your phone lastly those features are leech more battery life which is already in a limited quantity on a smartwatch sure it would be cool or or it uh, will be a, like a dictacy and a turn and run a phone call to your wrist but if that's going to kill your battery is it really worth it as far as the size of the differences between the smartwatch 2 and uh, and the other two watches the smartwatch 2 uh, sony smartwatch 2 clocks in at the uh, 9 9 uh, millimeter by 42 millimeter by 41 millimeter and the samsung galaxy gear is the is 11 millimeter by 37 millimeter by 57 millimeter which means the smartwatch 2 is 33 percent smaller than the galaxy gear but surprisingly the sony smartwatch weighs quite a bit more at 122 grams which is 4.3 oz as compared to the samsung's 74 grams and which is 2.6 oz that could be because of the standard smartwatch 2 comes with a stainless steel band and that would certainly boost the weight there's no word on the qualcomm talk but the images uh, make it look to be smaller, similar in size to the smartwatch too. Lastly on design is the durability. I don't know how much of a beating these things can take it in general but we don't know, it, we do know is that the Samsung Galaxy Gear is ready for IP55 uh, meaning it is be protected against the uh, dust and water spray for a few minutes but the smartwatch too is ready to IP57 which means it is protected against dust and submersions up to the meter of water for 30 minutes again no word on qualcomm smartwatch while both the galaxy gear and the smartwatch 2 run modified android software there's no standardized app store for the google for android smartphones apps nor is the android optimized for use on such small displays qualcomm seems to be using property software this means that the samsung sony and qualcomm all have to get developers on board to develop specifically for each device samsung has done well on its uh, front uh, and says that there will be about 70 apps available soon and about 12 uh, when the gear launches uh, but uh, sony has uh, had a year's head start in building 
using its ecosystem which means it has about 400 apps available for its smartwatch and assuming the Qualcomm is running the property software that uh, it will make it even more difficult for developers so we certainly uh, wouldn't expect more than a handful apps at the launch of course there are a number of apps that doesn't tell the whole story either uh, because uh, the apps will function differently on each device and the general consensus uh, so far is that the Samsung offerings feel more like an actual smartwatch while Sony offering feels more like an annex screen to your smartphone rather than a separate intelligent device this isn't always true as the Sony smartwatch allows for deeper and reading the uh, reading of Gmail and Twitter and the Facebook messages that the Galaxy Gear. But Galaxy Gear also has extra features like a built-in pedometer app and the smart relay uh, which can automatically move uh, what you are doing on your gear to your Galaxy phone and you as you might expect the extra hardware on the gear adds more functionality like being able to take calls, initiate calls and take photos and videos and the best of all the SYs for commands to draft messages and create new calendar entries, set alarms and check the weather. Sony's main extra feature is to enable uh, the ability to pair your smartwatch too with an NF NFC capable Android device. Uh, Qualcomm's talk set itself apart by offering wireless charging, although it uses the Qualcomm WePower LE technology rather than the QI wireless standard. The talk will also have an option to get a Bluetooth handset headset which will also use wireless charging and can have the talk control music played on them. I had to note that the Galaxy Gear does certain things with your Galaxy smartphone. That's because the Samsung smartwatch is not only covered, uh, is only compatible with Samsung's own smartphone. It will be compatible with the Galaxy Note 3 at a launch, and there will be software updates to the Samsung Galaxy S3, S4, and Note 2 to add support. On the other hand, the Sony smartwatch 2 and the Qualcomm Talk will work with any Android device running 4.0 iScreen sandwich or higher. Qualcomm is also considered ring sport for iOS and uh, but it hasn't confirmed anything yet and it should be noted that the functionality for all of the devices will be severely limited if you don't have a smartphone to pair with. As far as the battery life concerns, Samsung rate it up to 25 hours in regular and company battery claims tends to be a bit overblown so I wouldn't be surprised if the gear gets less and less. And on the other side, the Sony claims between the 3 and 4 days in normal use and Qualcomm doesn't give a specific number but also says days of battery life. The Samsung Galaxy Gear will be available beginning in the late September in most regions and October in the US and Japan for around $2.99 and Sony hasn't announced US pricing or availability but has said that the smartwatch 2 will be available in late September for uh, uh, $1.99 euro which is the $2.63 for a stainless steel strap and it's listed on Amazon UK as shipping next week for uh, $250 and no price for Qualcomm talk but it is planned for a Q4 2013 release and is expected to be around $1.300. As far as the conclusion is concerned, the Samsung Galaxy Gear has the most future and the most potential and assuming you have a smartphone uh, from a Samsung but its battery life is far worse than the competition and it has the most limited compatibility. Aside from the lower cost and better battery life and option for a changeable wrist tab, the Sony Smartwatch 2 has the advantage of being the only device that isn't a, a first generation product and that means the Sony app ecosystem has had more time to mature and Sony has had the time to fix the problems that were around in the first smartwatch and I don't yet know uh, what first gen bugs exist in the Galaxy Gear or the Talk and I don't know how to quickly to expect software updates to fix whatever issues there may be. In fact, I don't know enough at all about the Qualcomm Talk. And it has some interesting features, but there are still too many unknowns. And most importantly, the price and app support. That's it guys. Hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, then please give it a thumbs up. And also subscribe me. And I will make more videos like this. And yeah, peace out.